Hello friends welcome back this is Amit from Magnet and today we are going to create this awesome environment scene inside Unreal Engine 5. So first take a look what we are going to create today. So before we start if you are new to this channel I recommend you to check my videos and if you find those videos useful please do subscribe this channel and turn the notification on. And here is the name for those people who has already joined me as a member so if you really want to support me you can also join me as a member. So let's get started. So first we see that how we get those assets from the epic marketplace. So here is the epic games and we go to the marketplace and all the assets I use there those are absolutely free. So let's see that how you can get this. So go to the free and go to this permanently free content or collections. Then come to the very bottom here and you will see this ruler Australia and just click over here. And then you will select this add to project and whichever project you are working on just select and click on this add to project. And then I am also use some mega scan free content so go to this free and go to this mega scans and just click and go down here and you will see this collections so just click and add it to your project here and then we go over this free and go to this permanently free collections and then go down here and go to this page number two and you will see this one that is the temperate vegetations just click and just click on this add it to your project and select your project and just add to project okay so those three assets we need to build the scene so first we go to this file and go to the new level and create a empty level here just create and i save my old project and now we going to create a temporary light setup for our scene so we go to the window and go to this environment light mixer and then we first click on this create skylight and then we click on this create atmospheric light 0 but we leave this create atmospheric light 1 but we click on this create sky atmosphere and we leave this create volumetric cloud for now and we create this height fog here okay after that we go to this exponential height fog here and go to the search bar and just type fog and you will see this volumetric fog just enable this okay okay now we are going to build our world so before we building our world let's create a sample landscape here so for this go to the select mode and go to this landscape and just create a temporary landscape here and then go back to our select mode here okay so in this way you will find the surface here and now we're going to put the objects here so go to this content drawer and first to use the mega scan assets so go to this mega scan folder here and in order to make a filter you just click on here that is the static mesh but if you not find it here say let's delete this in order to set the filter go to this button here and just select this static mesh okay so in this way you will only see the static mesh and it is very handy to find your objects here so now we're going to put some object into background first so for this I'm using this wall and just place it here okay just like this our object is here and you will see that our object is from the back side so we go to our front side here okay so by the way I just click my right click button and press and hold the right click and just move my position by uh, pressing the WASD key here and then I press E to bring up and press Q to bring down here 
just like the video game here and now and here you go to decrease the camera speed so i decrease it to four and now we're going to duplicate this wall or you can just simply scale it up so in order to scale this up press r to bring this scale gizmo here and go to this middle box here when you see all the axis are turns to yellow then click and just drag your mouse so it can increase its size okay and also we go to this move gizmo here and place it little down here and now we're going to duplicate this model so press and hold the alt key and just click and drag and you will duplicate this model okay just like this and now again duplicate it one more time and then duplicate it again to make a big wall and also again duplicate this and just place it here okay so in this way we will create a background there and it looks similar but don't worry we are going to work it on to make it different little bit okay just fill the gaps just like this okay and you can also make another copies on the top here as well just like this okay so make a big wall here okay and then again we go back to our content drawer again and select some other objects here so maybe this one let's bring it here and sometimes it will take little time to rearrange its shaders so don't worry about that and just place it here so you'll see that it gone i don't know why but again just drag it here just like this and you can make uh, some change here and you will see that now it going to look better okay and then again duplicate it and place it here and maybe we can do one thing that we can scale it up and down to make it little bit of different and then again we duplicate it and overlap just like this and you will see that it look different okay so place it here okay so now you will see that it look nice and then again put another object here so maybe this one look nice so place it here okay and also we scale it up just make a little bit of different looking thing okay so and it is not specific you can make your own design so it's not specific just like this okay so now if uh, when you satisfied with your wall now we're going to for the side walls as well so i'm using the same object here so i select this object and hold alt and drag this axis to duplicate this and now i rotate this to here and place it here okay at the bottom just like this okay and place it here okay it is very simple and uh, it also very fun to design your scene because every time you create it will be a new result because nothing is certain or nothing is uh, just same as you do in previously so it is very fun to design your scene because every time you will get a new result okay so i am little bit of fast forward my video from this point because you already understand that how you can put the object and just make a random design here okay okay so we did a little bit of doing this right side wall and now we're going to select all these walls just select and press shift and hold the shift key and just click every primitives here just like this and now we're going to press and hold the alt key and click on this axis and just drag it to make it duplicate okay so now we duplicate this wall but you can see that we have to rotate this as well so click on this rotate gizmo here or just click uh, press e to bring this rotation gizmo and just rotate this okay and then we also place it here okay just like this and now you'll see that it creates a little bit of area here 
and you can see that it really look nice okay and now we're going to make a little bit of uh, size of this wall as well so increase the size of the wall or height of the wall so i'm using this model as well so use this and just rotate it here and then we place it here and then also duplicate it and place it here just like this and also rotate it this side okay and place it little down okay so now you'll see that it creates a nice result here and now we also going to fill up the top here so for the ceiling we're going to use some other content so let's see who is going to use we here so maybe this rock will help us so just click and drag it to here just like this and place it little top and we're going to increase the size okay so i going to little top here and select this middle gizmo and when all the gizmos axis are turned yellow we just drag our mouse and make a ceiling like structure here okay so you can understand that what we are going to achieve here so just fill the top portion here make a ceiling okay so now you'll see that we make a little bit of cave like structure here and again we're going to duplicate this and maybe we rotate this just like this and you will see that we're going to fill all the gaps from the top or you can see that there are a little bit of gap so we're going to duplicate some object i think this will work and just close all the gaps here okay so you can increase the scale if you need and also put it down here and you can also rotate this just like this okay so now we seal the gaps and again we still have some gaps here as well so we duplicate it and place it here okay so now you're going to seal all the gaps here okay so likewise you can create a other small narrow passes from here but i'm not going to create this for now because it will be very long if i do so but i will make this scene from here so here you can see that we make a cave like structure here and we also have a surface here so we're going to fill the surface as well so we get some of the surface material as well here so i select this one and place it here maybe and then we're going to select our scale tool again and increase the scale okay just like this and we place it here and also play duplicate it and place it here and there and it all depends on you that how you can place your objects okay so in order to make a different looking just rotate this okay and also duplicate it multiple time to fill the gaps here do the same okay so now you can see that we literally create a nice surface here okay and then we going to put other objects to make a little bit of more fun here so maybe this one so i select and press it here and then i increase the skill okay so you will see that it really creates another dimension to our ground here and also duplicate it and place it here just like this make it a little bit of different looking okay and then we duplicate it one more time and place it here and also we rotate this just like this okay so now you'll understand that uh, how you can make small changes to make your scene more nice okay and then we place it here and there maybe we scale it up little bit just like this make a nice looking cave scene here okay and also we duplicate it here and one thing you have to do that we duplicate it here 
and you rotate this upside down just like this okay 180 degree and then we place it at the top also make a nice result on the ceiling so our ceiling not look even so make a little bit of variation here and also we're going to rotate this just like this and make it place it little top here and you will see that now it going to create a more nice looking and more organic look here okay so this is all depends on you that how you can design your scene because it's all depends on your imagination so now you'll see that wow it really creates a nice result okay so place it here and then we going to rotate this and place it here and then duplicate one more time so you will see that only using few primitives here or few uh, objects here we can make a nice scene to our environment okay and you can say that nice look to our environment so now you'll understand that how you can make scene like this okay so this look really amazing and again duplicate it and place at the back side and also rotate it this angle 90 degree and then also we place it here okay so this look really cool and now we are going to make a little peak here on on the peak we put a tree okay so we are going to use this peak maybe for now or you can use another one as well so maybe i'm using this one for now and for this i increase the scale just like this and place it little down here okay so you can see that it's a little different than my actual video uh, but according to the size of this cave i make a small peak here so i can put it tree which can fit here but if you think you're going to create the same scene uh, what i did you can put uh, this ceiling little higher here and fill the gaps so it can match the scene and if you really want to uh, want my project file you can definitely dm me and you will get the link in the description down below okay so now one thing we have to do that we put a tree over this peak so for the tree i am using the ruler australia pack so go to this content ruler and here is the ruler australia pack and if you set your static mesh option here you will see all the static mesh over here and then i am going to use this tree here so just click and drag it to your viewport here and let's put this tree on this rock and if you think the tree is little high in scale so we can definitely scale it down by click on here and just click it down little bit or scale it down like this okay so now in my original project the tree leaves are glowing so i select this tree leaf and first we select the tree and place it over here okay and also we can duplicate this rock and place it here and also dip it down like this okay and also duplicate one more time and also place it here or maybe we can do one thing that we delete this and just select this and it place it here okay and select this one and place it here so make a little bit of down platform here okay so now you'll see that it look nice okay so now we're going to change this uh, leaf material to a emissive kind of material so we select this tree here and go to this details panel and just go little down and you will see that element 2 holds these leaves okay and you will see all the parameters here and we go to this hierarchy and go to these materials and now you will see that the all the node of this material and 
this node look very complicated but don't worry we're not going to look at here anyway we just select all those three last nodes here and just place it here okay and the objective is to make a emissive material on this lips so you'll see that the emissive color is empty here so we're going to put some parameters here so first we press and hold the three in the keyboard and just click here okay so you will see that we get a three color parameters here and now we're going to put another node which is the multiply node so press m and just click and you will see the multiply node here and we are going to need one more node for the intensity scale so we are going to put a scalar parameter here so press s and hold the s key and just click and you will create a scalar parameter here and we also rename this to intensity intensity okay so it will be the intensity parameter for our emissiveness so now we select this color and just double click on here and we change the color to something like warm orange type of color here or you can change any color from here so just make a little warm orange type of color here okay and hit ok and then we link this to multiply node here and also we click and drag this intensity node to the multiply node b in this way you will link this uh, intensity parameter to this color parameter and we take this output and set it to this emissive color input okay so what i do here i just make a color for this emissive material and also put a intensity parameter so we can change increase or decrease the intensity of this color okay so in default this intensity is set to zero but we change this to one and now you'll see that the emissiveness will increase and if you change this to 10 you will get more emissiveness here but we don't want that kind of intensity so we change this to 0.5 for now and we can also change it later on according to our need and then we just click on this apply and then we save this material okay and after save we close this okay so now you will see that our lips are glowing okay so now we have to do one important thing here that we are going to disable all the lights so we don't want any environment light or skylight so so you can understand that what is the purpose for the light it's only to build our initial scene okay because if you not put any light you will not able to see anything so it is for only for the temporary basis so we select all this light except this height fog because you need the fog we select this directional light and select the sky atmosphere skylight and let's see what else we have here so we have only these three elements here so we just press delete so now we delete all these things but we're going to need one more thing that is go to this box here and go to the visual effects and we need this post process volume okay this uh, element will control all the exposure settings we just click and this post process volume when we see the post process volume go to this details panel first we going to make this post process volume to affect entire the world so we type unbound and you will see that infinite extent unbound and just click on here okay and then again we cross the search bar and type exposure and you will see some of the exposure settings here that is the metering mode first select this and if you want you can change this to manual mode and when you change this to manual you also change this exposure compensation and just increase it and you will see that our ex exposure is increasing but uh, it is uh, very uh, handy if you set it to its automatic exposure histogram and then also do one thing that go to this minimum brightness and maximum brightness settings turn all those things on and make this to one and one okay and now we're going to put other lights so for this go to this box again go to the lights and go to this point light and now you will see that we're going to see our cave again because of this point light 
okay and place it point light over here and you will see that our tree is little bit top from the ground so we select our tree and put it down little bit here and now also we set our light over here okay so it looks like that our tree emitting the lights okay now we going to select our light and delete this exposure search bar and we select our light and go down here to make some changes to the light first we go to the point light source radius we increase the radius of the light okay and also we increase the softness of the light and then we go down here and here you will see the intensity so the intensity is set to 8 cat but we change this to maybe 200 for now and now you're going to see some surroundings here and now it is a very important that is the indirect lighting intensity and the volumetric scattering intensity so increase the indirect lighting intensity a little bit so you will see that some of the indirect lighting also increase here and it is the most important that the volumetric scattering and it will get create a nice result to the same so i increase this volumetric scattering so you will see that the volumetric scattering what work the volumetric scattering do here but if you think that the volumetric scattering intensity maximum value is 4 you are wrong because you can also change this to maybe 10 so you have to type it here okay so now you will see that this create a nice result to our scene so but what basically we need to make that this light is comes from the tree leaves but when you see that the tree leaves itself create the shadows it look little weird that what thing create the light doesn't create its own shadow okay so what thing you have to do so you can go to this point light and go a little down here and you will see that the shadow option here that is the cast static shadows if you uncheck this and also if you uncheck this cast dynamic shadow here you can set all the shadow to be disappear okay and you can see that there is no shadow okay but one problem is that it can delete all the shadow for all objects which we don't want so what else we can do we select the light and back on the shadows here and also the dynamic shadow here and we select our tree here we select our tree and we just disable the shadow only for the tree so we select the tree and go down here or you can just go over here and that is the cast shadow just turn this off now you can get all the object create its own shadow but not the tree okay so now it will be more manageable for the our scene and now you'll see that it really creates a nice result and if i put our light in between the tree leaves here okay and now we select our light and go down here or maybe here you will see this option that is the attenuation radius and this is basically this radius okay and if you increase this attenuation radius you can literally light up our scene total areas okay so it can increase the area of the light propagation okay so it really creates a nice result i guess and if you think that uh, you need more lights you can duplicate this light and you can put over here and there or you can decrease the attenuation distance or uh, and also increase the intensity here and maybe you can put here and there okay so make your light setting it's all depends on you that where you put on to your light okay so you can see that it really creates a nice result okay so now the time for the ground vegetation but before we put the vegetations let's put some uh, root here because we are under the ground and there is a most probably we can see some roots of the plants which is on the above so for this again go to this content drawer and when you are in rural australia pack 
you go down here and let's see what we have so there is some roots but we going to put the root all over this place so for this we need a foliage multiplier so for this we go to this mode here and go to the foliage okay and then again we go to this content drawer and here you have this sm root 01 okay so just click and drag it to here so maybe in your case it will take little time for the compiling the shaders but i have already compiled all the shaders so it took no time and now you select this and now we just click on here and you will see that it puts those roots here okay or you can go over down here after selecting this go down here and you will see the scale so the minimum scale the maximum scale you can change this to 0.5 and change this to 1 set it 1 so the scale from the 0.5 to 1 will measure here okay and now we put all these roots over the surface okay just like this and you can see that it really creates this nice result so it all about the details that you put into your scene and if you think that the density is less you can go over here and you can increase the density after you increase the density from here that is the 10 or maybe if i put it 2 here well the maximum value is 1 but also remember that you can also increase the density from here as well that is the density per kuu and you can change this to maybe 200 okay and then if you put you can get more dense foliage here okay just like this so it really look nice and now we're going to put some fern over here so for this i am using this pn fern and you will see some of the fern from here and you can just select this one i think this one look nice and just click and drag over here okay L take a little time for the sh compiling all the shaders here and disable this just select this and disable this one for now select this fun and now we just click and put all the fun over here okay you can see that the fun texture is not appear because it compiling its material here okay and just like this so now we're going to put some watery surface here and when we put some water surface or reflective surface it take the whole scene into a next level okay so for this we go back to our main mode here and go to this content drawer and select this ruler australia okay and also we uncheck this static mesh option here and under this ruler australia you will go to this water folder here and you will see that there are some of the water material here okay so in order to put the water material first we put a plane over here so on the plane we put this water material so for this go to this box here and go to the shape and select this plane here okay so here is the plane and now we're going to increase the scale of this plane so first increase it just like this and place it here and place it little down here okay just like this and now we're going to apply the material over this plane so here is the water one material and you will see that all material look nice select this material and click over here and go down here and you will see this material option and just click on this this arrow and you will instantly see the material of the water material is appeared here okay and you can see that it really creates a nice result to our scene okay but one thing we have to notice that the reflection is not that good so what we have to do we have to put a reflection catcher over here 
so for this we going to go to this box again and then we go to this visual effects and go to this planar reflection just select this and now we have our planar reflection and we set it down here okay just like this and also place it here so fill all the gaps and also we can increase the scale of this planar reflection plate and place it here okay and now when you place your planar reflection go over this details panel and you will see that show preview plane we just uncheck this and now you will see that it creates a nice reflection to our scene okay and also you can put a little top here okay so now you will see that how it look like and also we select this planar reflection as well as the plane and we put it little down here okay just like this and you will see that it really creates a nice result and if you think that the some of the foliage are not look right here so we again go to this foliage section and instead of just click and drag this ball here we press shift and hold the shift key and in this case if you drag your mouse you will see that we can delete all this unwanted foliage here okay and again we select this foliage uh, this fern model here and go down here and increase the scale to maybe 2 by 2 and we can put some large fern on this corners here okay okay just like this or maybe we can increase the size little bit more maybe 5 by 5 and we can put those fern over here okay and now we go back to our main mode here and you will see that it creates a nice result and again we go to the light and maybe we increase the light intensity to maybe 400 and now you can see that it look really amazing okay so this look really nice and now we're going to put some effects here that is the falling leaves and the falling leaves effects also present in the ruler australia pack so we go to this ruler australia and then we go to this effects and here you find these two effects that is the bard and the falling leaves so i just double click on here and that is the falling leaves blueprint here and we just click and drag it here okay and when you put it here you will see that the falling leaves effects here so we place the falling leaf effect here and you can see sometimes it's really hard to place your object in your desired place so here it is okay so just place it here and now you will see that some of the leaves are falling from the tree and we can also put some bard to our scene so we go back and you will see the bard folder here and here you will see the two effects so we select this one and just put it here and you will see some of the bards here but is because our cave is not big enough so maybe the bard is not fits here but if you create this kind of scene you can make that cave little big so you can put the bard here okay so for this sake of this tutorial i put the bard here and you will see that it really creates a nice result okay so this is all about the scene and i hope that you really get the idea that how you can build the scene so once you build the scene now we create a camera so go to this box and go to the cinematic and create a cine camera actor so this is our camera this is our camera and just right click 
and click this snap view to object okay and now we select this camera tool here or go to this perspective and go to the cine camera actor and you will see here is our scene and now you can make a nice camera position to our scene or maybe we can delete this light okay and maybe here and then we create a sequencer so for this go to this content drawer or this content drawer and go to here and make a at level sequence okay and this we name this as tutorial and just save it and here is the sequencer here so first we put our camera over here so go to the cine camera actor here is our camera and you can just simply click and drag and drop to here and it will make a camera cut for our scene okay and now we select our camera here that is the camera and you can see that the current focal length is set to 35 we can decrease this to maybe 15 so we have the 15 millimeter lens here and you can get pretty good nice wide angle shot here and also we select the camera and go over here and you can change this to film back to maybe this 16 is to 9 DSLR and then we right click and place our camera into a nice position here okay so now you'll see that it really look nice from here and you can also do one thing that go to this transform and make a small camera animation to your scene so just make a keyframe here and make sure that you select this auto keyframe switch here and then we go to the very end and maybe we make a camera push here okay and now if you see it really creates a nice camera movement here but we also going to put some camera shake over here so we need to make a blueprint here so for this go to this content drawer and make a blueprint for the camera shake so i have already make a camera shake blueprint here but i am going to show you that how i build this so just right click and go to this blueprint class okay and then go over here that is the all classes and search for shake and you will see that this camera shake base just click and select and name this as camera shake okay so here is the camera shake blueprint and just double click on it okay and once you open the blueprint just close it for first time and again open this blueprint and now you'll see that simplified version and then we go to this root shake pattern me check this drop down box and go to this parallel noise camera shake pattern okay and then we go to this timing and set this duration to zero okay if you set this duration to zero the camera shake will affect entire the timeline so now we make a little room here okay and compile this and then we go to this camera cine actor cine camera actor and go to this track and go to this camera shake and we select our camera shake that we just build now okay and you will see that the camera shake start from the cursor here so we just drag and at the very beginning and we just minimize this for now and i make sure that you can fill enter the timeline here okay so now if i run my timeline here you will see that it will make little bit of camera shake but not that much so we select our camera shake blueprint here and go to this rotation and you can see that the rotation amplitude multiplier is set to zero we set it to two and then compile compile this and now you will see that it will create little bit of camera shake okay so this is how you can build the scene and also do the camera shake and you can also do another camera movement so go to this transform 
go to the rotation go to the very beginning here and you will see the rotation roll you can change this roll and go to the very end and also make a plus rotation here and now let's see how it look like wow you can see it really creates a nice result okay i make a bigger cave for my actual video and also make a corridor in the behind uh, but you can really create those things uh, if you make these things you can also do the same thing so i just make the video short and just demonstrate you that how i build the enter scene I can, you can see that this uh, uh, watery surface look also nice and when you put the reflection catcher in a planar reflection catcher it really creates a nice reflection to our scene so it really look nice okay and whenever you feel that your frame rate goes down you can do one thing that go to the settings go to this engine scalability settings and you set it to high for editing purpose and if you set it to high you will see that your frame rate is increasing okay but when you satisfied with your scene you need to export this so one when you satisfied you just go to this engine scalability settings and set it to cinematic okay and you will see that when you put it say cinematics uh, things going to laggy but don't worry because you have already done all the settings to your scene so you don't need to do other editing so just make it cinematics and now we going to export as into movie render queue so if i go to the windows go to the cinematics i will see the movie render queue here but you might not see the movie render queue here so if you not see the movie render queue here you go to the edit go to this plugins and search for movie and you will see that movie render queue plugin and the movie render queue additional render passes select both of these and you will prompt to restart your engine so just restart the engine so just close this and go to the windows cinematic and go to this movie render queue okay so here is the movie render queue window go to this render and select your desired render sequence so for in here the tutorial is the render queue i mean the sequencer so just select this and now you have to do some settings for your render so there is the unset configuration just click on here and you will see that jpeg sequence but never uh, export your uh, output into jpeg sequence because it's not that good so just delete this select and delete this go to the settings first we select this anti-aliasing it is very important and go to this anti-aliasing settings change this to anti sample count and i'm always using the 32 samples but you can uh, make uh, higher numbers and you can also change this number as well but i leave it as one and now we are going to che check this box that is the override anti aliasi okay and also we change this to multi sampling multi sample anti aliasing that is the msaa and also we check this box that is the use current warm up frame and the render warm up frames and we also change this warm up frame count to 128 okay so we set all the anti aliasing settings then go back to the settings and also go to this camera and we set our shutter timing to frame close and leave it as zero and then again go to the settings and go to this go game over rights and just leave it as it is and also do one thing that go to this high resolution okay and when you go to the high resolution option just click on this override sub surface scattering okay and if you want you can change the sample but 64 is nice number so leave it as 64 so here you can find this exr jpeg png sequence uh, you can choose the png sequence as well as the exr sequence so i use the exr sequence because you can see that it is the 16 bit so just select this exr sequence okay and leave it as it is and then you go to this output and now here from you can choose the output directory so just select the output directory and everything look nice and if you want the resolution i set it to full hd and you can change this to 4k it's all up to you and then you can also change the custom frame rate from here so maybe i use the 23.976 i don't know why i like this frame rate 
but I always use frame rate and everything look nice and just accept this and after that you just click on this render local so it will render all the frames for you okay so just close this for now because I have already um, render all the frames not this I have my own renders so this is all about this tutorial and I hope you really enjoyed this and I really happy that I made this tutorial and I really get a nice result uh, even after I made this tutorial in a very short time so I hope you really enjoy this tutorial and if you make something like this please share with me and if you like this video I recommend you to check my other videos and if you like those videos please do subscribe this channel and turn the notification on so this is for today and we will see in my next video so till then take care and bye bye